What's up, everyone? Ryan Larkin back with another edition of the Daily Fantasy Racing Quick Picks on the Mayo Media Network. Last week didn't go exactly as I hoped. Uh, definitely missed in a couple areas here with the Quick Pick. So we'll look to rebound um, and, and do a better job this week. Got bailed out. You know, at least at least Truex falling back late bailed me out of, of my fate of the week call. But um, what wasn't the type of performance I like putting out there for you guys? Um, as always, like the video, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. Leave a comment, you know, below. If you feel like I got another, you know, dud play there, let me know it. Let me hear it. If you feel like I, I got some good plays or if we help you win something, let us know as well. Um, so this week, we got another road course race for the Cup Series. They are at Road America, which is a massive, massive four-mile track. Uh, it's got, I think, 14 total turns, if I remember correctly. Um, but, but, yeah, four miles, massively long and extreme tire wear at this place. But by the time you get done with one lap, four miles, lots of left and right hand turns, tires are wore out. So you can just imagine after five, six, seven, eight laps, how, how bad tires can be here. So that plays a big factor into things. Um, the racing could be really good. You, you do get some carnage, some crazy strategy, some, some really exciting racing can be sometimes difficult to project for DFS purposes. But nonetheless, I do like the racetrack and I think it puts on a really good show. Um, one thing to consider when you are making your lineup tomorrow is it does seem like passing might be difficult. Uh, there was some, some rumblings of, of being difficult to pass through practice. Uh, so we, we could see the guys starting up front, stay up front and really try to manipulate that strategy around the straight stage breaks to, to really their benefit and to stay out front. Um, not a whole lot more to talk about road course racing is what it is. You, you have different strategies and, and you have some, some chaos capabilities, but for the most part, the best drivers tend to find their way to the front. And I, I think we're going to lean heavily on that Sonoma race a couple of weeks ago to see who, who was fast, but it does appear that a couple of things have changed uh, for, for this race. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, of course, we'll give you, instead of a dominator, where I'm, I'm going to give you my, my winner for the week. He'll, he'll also be a dominator, but winner of the week, we got a super low lap count here. Um, so, you know, four mile track doesn't leave us a lot of laps. To, to play for so we'll give you the winner of the week um tournament play of the week value play of the week and of course my fade of the week which hopefully will be a little bit more of a uh, outright fade that actually works for us um so let's go ahead and jump into it um winner of the week chase elliott eleven thousand one hundred on DraftKings starts first looks super strong hendrick seems even better this week than they did at sonoma uh, he led 26 laps at Sonoma. His teammate Larson led the first chunk of that race as well. I just feel like the confidence is there after that win last race. They're super fast on the road course. I think this track, high tire wear, it really suits Chase Elliott. Uh, so I, I got Chase Elliott to win this race, and, and I, I really like him starting first. I think he'll be able to manage the race better. And as long as this pit crew doesn't leave a, a wheel loose like at Sonoma, he should be able to maintain that lead and run really well. Um not a lot more to say. There's only 62 laps here. So even if he does lead a chunk of it, it's probably only going to be about 20, 25 laps. Uh, he will probably short pit around the stages. There will be some strategy calls. Maybe he gets 30 laps led and 15, you know, fast laps, something like that um, as kind of like a peak. So not a ton of dominator points there. In terms of DraftKings, he must probably, he probably needs a win here to truly pay off. Um, I, I don't know if he falls back to fourth or fifth, even with 20, 20 laps led or so if he can still be optimal so something to consider there when you're making your lineups like i said this is more of a pick for the win than necessarily a dominator play um if you're looking for a contender to go against him i think his teammate kyle larson is gonna be strong i really think chase briscoe is gonna be strong and chris busher who's actually my value play in this video is someone i think is gonna be really really strong come race time so a few guys to, to kind of look at for the win as well um down into it next we'll go into my tournament play Kevin Harvick, 8,100. Uh, so Kevin Harvick looked phenomenal at Sonoma, finishing fourth. He was 11th back at Coda uh, earlier this year. He starts 28th. So I pretty much, with my tournament play, I'm, I'm only 62 laps. I'm really looking for place differential plays, guys that can basically add 10 to 15 place differential points to their total, score top 10, top 15 finish, and, and score in that 45 to 50 points range. That's really what I'm hoping for. And Kevin Harvick fits the bill perfectly. There are a lot of guys that start up front that I think will maintain track position and finish up front, but there's also going to be a handful of guys, five, six, seven guys, that I think will have 10-plus place differential points, and it really just depends on where they finish, whether or not they'll be optimal 
But I, I think Harvick has a really good shot at it. His teammates qualified really good. Obviously, Chase Briscoe looked really strong. Custer made it to the final rounds and qualified top 10. I think there's more speed in his car. I think he you know, put down a bad qualifying lap. And I believe he will be able to, to get us in the top 15 and potentially into the optimal lineup. I really like Kevin Harvick. It's a bit of a cash play, too. I think there's some chalk elements to it. But I, I really like his upside, and, and I feel really safe about that play. Next up, uh, value play, as I mentioned a bit ago, Chris Buescher at 6,300. Stupid cheap. He finished second at Sonoma uh, with 16 fast laps. He had roughly about 14% of the fast laps in that race. Actually, that's not true because of the cautions. He probably had almost 20% of the fast laps in that race. So super fast car there. Start seventh, so we're not tied to him fin- You know, starting second or third. He can finish fourth, fifth, sixth. He really doesn't need to move too far up to pay off at this price, but his upside is literally a race win. His car is super fast. And, and I think he'll finish in the in the top five for sure. Um, but we don't even need that. That's the best part. We don't need him to finish top five for this play to finish out, you know, work out. It's sixth, seventh, eighth. That range will, will really benefit us as well. Um, I, there's a few other guys. I really like a pivot to his teammate, Brett Kozlowski, if you're looking for something a little bit different. Uh, Kozlowski starts 11th. That Roush Fenway group definitely has something figured out on the road courses right now. So I really do like like both those guys um, this weekend. And then lastly, let's get to Tyler Reddick, um, my fate of the week. I, I'm going a little bit safe there. I, I actually wanted to go Martin Truex again. I wanted to go to the well twice in a row and see if it would bite me again. Uh, just couldn't get the confidence to do it. Uh, so we'll go Tyler Reddick. Start fourth, 8,600. I, I don't see him winning. I don't see him running top three. Maybe he can eke out a top three finish. I, I just don't believe he'll, he'll have that ability. Um, 8,600 is too expensive to, to really pay off if he's not in the top three. Unlike Busher at 6,300, where really finishing with 35 DK points is, is a good haul. That's not good enough for Reddick. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and fade him. I'm going to put my money elsewhere in that price range. You know, obviously Kevin Harvick, 8,100 starting 28th. That feels safer, smarter, and with more upside. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to fade Reddick this week. I don't know how much leverage we'll get on the field with that one. But I, I don't feel like put any money on him, and, and I'll try to take even if it's ten or fifteen percent, try to take that that little bit of advantage on the field and, and capitalize on it. Um, that'll do it for us today. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, following me on Twitter at Larkin Eight. Thank you for subscribing to the video. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Again, call me out or, or say how good it was. Uh, for my content, I, I do full slate breakdowns over at dailyfanracing.com, so be sure to check that out as well. And hopefully we'll see you again next week. Thank you.